everybody um i apologize that i have been gone um really no excuse i mean i just started uh my summer class this monday micro blah but that's not an excuse because i've been home and i've been slacking so um i apologize for that but i've, I've just been having a really hard time trying to come up with like ideas for videos because like I've said in other videos I am limited to what I can talk about in terms of clinical and stuff like that and I really want to share with you my clinical experiences so what I've been doing is kind of just writing down um, <clears throat> moments and stuff that I remember from clinical so that way when I graduate and I'm done with it I can speak about it and I won't get kicked out of school for it um it just thinks because um you know i'm not gonna reveal the patient's names or the facility that i am doing my clinical in so i i don't know it, it's it's just a bummer because let's say something really cool happens and i don't remember to write it down it's gone from my memory and then ugh, it just sucks but um before i get started with my video i just wanted to um send my uh, condolences to the castellano family um i don't know if you guys heard or i'm pretty sure you have um talia castellano or talia joy 18 as she's known on youtube uh passed away yesterday um if you don't know who she is i'm going to put the link right here to her youtube page um she was a aspiring uh, makeup artist she was very good for her age can i just say that she was bomb.com okay and um she passed away yesterday she had a very aggressive form of cancer and um it's it's just it, it's sad childhood cancer in general is sad okay let me just say that before people can get offended and oh well adults die from cancer too it's sad cancer sad but when it happens to children it, it's just it's i guess because i'm a mom i guess it strikes a chord with me but um regardless of her cancer she was always so happy and she did so many videos and um very humbling person and you know she got to meet ellen which i love ellen and um you know i was following her story on youtube um the page on facebook which i will put a link to right here and it's just it's 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 been a sad week with her passing away and um cory monteith from glee him too passing away I, it's been a really crappy week but um so my condolences to his family as well and their friends and um yeah so okay over with the somber moment but um i just wanted um today's video to be uh, it's kind of like more help for me than anything i'm doing more of the video so that i can know what to study um but basically the video is going to be about like what you should be studying or um, ideas of what to study while you're like on a break whether it's a long break a summer break or a winter break anything short with a week off anything like that where you find yourself like what do i do i should be studying i should be doing something um i'm basically just gonna go over what uh was taught to me in nursing one uh nursing two brief little ditty on math ditty did i just say ditty brief little something on math um, and clinical skills and I actually will be going into detail in another video on math like doing examples and everything and if I could find my supplies for some of my clinical skills I'll do another video for that so um, yeah let's get correct a look in okay, so for nursing one basically what I did was I went through all my PowerPoint slides now before I did this, uh, I was torn about how to study and um, the NCLEX book that I actually purchased, which isn't by, no it's not near me so whatever, we'll move on from that. Um, 
basically the NCLEX book that I have is strictly questions and um, but I guess that's what I get for not really um, looking through it and uh, rushing to purchase it. The kind of NCLEX book I wanted was more of a um, comprehensive kind of book where they kind of give you um, summaries and reviews of body systems and all that stuff. So it's content based, but they also give you questions. So I slacked on that. I apologize. But I hear the Saunders book, which I'll put a link to right up here, um, is a good book. And um, I will probably purchase it so that during winter break, I have like a month off, um, I can do some stuff then. So it won't be a totally lost cause, but anyway. Um, so like I said, being that I don't have the book, I just kind of, um, I'm, I just kind of, <laughs> I'm just kind of reviewing what was taught and going over what I remember was really important, what to take away and all that stuff. So for nursing one, for me at least, it was the basics. Um, precautions and protocols, mobility, immobility, uh, pressure ulcers, um, proper documentation, and um, pharmacodynamics, which in other nursing programs, can be like a class in itself but being that my program is a two-year program and it's so condensed it was literally one lecture and my mind was blown after that lecture but um they have a I feel like I'm talking and I'm just like getting closer I'm sorry um they have good uh, books out there for that all the drug books and um pharmacodynamics books textbooks and all that stuff so if you're interested in that or you feel like what you were taught wasn't enough or you just feel like yourself you're not understanding it always get a supplemental supplemental book that always helps um out of all the stuff that i'm actually going over in the video i'm just really briefly going over it the only things i'm really going into detail are i think the pharmacodynamics because in terms of like assessment and stuff I want to do an, a separate video on that because I, I feel like if I try to cover everything now, I'm going to bore you into a freaking coma, okay? So, um, being that I'm not going to do a video on pharmacodynamics itself, I'm just going to go over it kind of a little bit in detail. So basically, your biggest takeaway from pharmacodynamics, if anything, if you can't remember anything, is the six rights, which is the right drug the right patient, the right dose, the right time, the right route, and then the right documentation. You want to make sure that that is so crucial. And an important thing to even do before you even give a med is to check that order. You know, don't be afraid to question the physician because sometimes in the rush of things, they may put uh, 500 milligrams when they're supposed to be 50 milligrams, and you just want to make sure that you're not just doing what it says on the computer you this is why as nurses we need to know the meds because there's been errors and now we're at a point where nurses can't blame the physicians we will be responsible for that because we're the ones giving the medication so definitely know the six rights very important um know both the generic and brand name of the med because depending on your facility how it is um, <clears throat> place in the computer it may be the generic name and if you don't know the generic name you just know it as Lipitor or aspirin it, yeah you might be in a little bit of trouble so definitely um, learn both um, <clears throat> ah, sorry <laughs> um, ooh, what do I have here oh know your med specifically like what it's for what it's treating um why your specific patient is taking the med um any side effects that they should be aware of not just your general like commercial ones where they're like nausea vomiting diarrhea no you want to know like okay if this if i'm giving my patient a certain med and they have kidney problems then you know they could get bladder infection all kinds of crap so you need to know the more severe side effects depending on the age of your patient, other conditions that they may have and whatnot. Let's see, what else? Oh, make sure they can take 
the med, you know, make sure they're not allergic to it or make sure that um, <clears throat> if the order for the med is PO, which is by mouth, that they could take it by mouth. Um, I had um, a situation where, oh, wait, let me rewind that. There's been situations where um, patients will have um, Tylenol on their order of meds and it's the pill but you know they can't have anything by mouth because they're gonna have surgery what have you so the physician should have ordered or the order should have been the rectal ones the suppositories so yay suppositories um so anyway um yeah make sure they can take the med make sure they're not allergic always check like i said check the physician's orders and um definitely know how to read the orders so like when i first went into the computer and i saw the orders for the meds and it was kind of like um ecotrin uh 81 milligrams po q4h blah 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 and i'm just like what is that about but uh like just using that for example like i said po is by mouth q4h means every four hours um yeah so that's that um, other basics that we learned that I learned about in nursing one was cardiac assessment, respiratory assessment, GI and GU assessment, so your poops and your peas, <laughs> nutrition, uh, fluid and electrolytes. And I definitely have to do a separate video for fluid and electrolytes because um, for those of you who follow me and are going into nursing one fluid and electrolytes is gonna be your enemy okay so you really well among other things like abgs but anyway fluid and electrolytes is a toughie um but basically the main thing to take away from nursing one whether it's you whether it's me is if all else fails and you don't remember anything remember hand washing and safety patient safety good god are those crucial so crucial um and another important thing to take away too is with any put it right here can you even read what i wrote oh with any condition or issue you have know the nursing process okay when you get a condition or a disease or any sort of uh, abnormality you're gonna want to know the nursing process you're gonna want to know what to assess for how to diagnose it what interventions you should take should woo, should take and the proper outcomes that you can expect for your patient hand washing safety nursing process all right moving on to nursing two now with nursing two, obviously you're going to get into more a little bit of depth of uh, what you did in nursing one. You're going to elaborate more. Nursing one is more of wellness and maybe a little bit of illness depending on your program. So you're going to want to have your basics and your foundation strong. So when you come into nursing two, you'll be ready to roll. Okay. So big thing to remember in nursing two is review your AMP before lecture depending on whatever disease you're learning that day really go over the AMP so that when you're in lecture you're not like oh crap like I remember learning that I don't remember what it's called or more specifically the physiology not necessarily the anatomy which you I mean you should know the anatomy but if your weak point is how the body functions definitely go over physiology um and what else do i have um and now i'm just gonna list basically everything that was taught for me in nursing too um so we went into diabetes am i saying um a lot i apologize we went um we spoke about diabetes mellitus uh perioperative nursing which in Includes pre-op, intra-op, post-op, so like what you do before, during, after surgery, IV fluids, and blood therapy. That's also, I feel, is very crucial because I feel like as nurses, we're constantly giving fluids and 
knowing what fluid to give to what patient is very important and it was something that my class depending on their background or experience we kind of struggled with that we have um a couple of kids in my class that are um uh oh my god what are they called well we have uh an emt um we have someone who works in the er uh as a technician and we have a lpn so they kind of you know for them they kind of know more or less but really that's something else that that you should know very well and blood therapy depending on where you work what unit you're on um you may see it, you may not but it's also something to kind of just have in the back of your mind um an important thing would be like a uh, reaction during a blood transfusion that's something very important um um um, um allergies immunology we didn't go into too much depth just kind of your basic allergic reactions um, your anaphylactic shock all that stuff hiv and aids surprisingly it was all bunched in one chapter we didn't really go into depth too much on that because i guess it's not as prevalent as it used to be but a big thing to take away from hiv and aids is definitely your safety precautions and protecting yourself and protecting the patient biggies very biggies oxygenation this was one that was set up into two different lectures and the reason being was because we covered a plethora of information we covered um, hypertension coronary artery disease angina uh, PVD which is peripheral vascular disease in the arteries and the veins uh, thrombophlebitis iron deficiency anemia pneumonia, uh, tuberculosis, uh, COPD, but more specifically chronic bronchitis and emphysema, which kind of like fall under the branch of COPD. Then we moved on to GI, and with the gastro stuff, we learned about GERD, peptic ulcers, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, intestinal obstruction, cholecystitis. Out of all the lectures I had this semester, that might have been like the toughest one because we only have lecture from four hours and covering all of those disorders. So like what it is, how to assess for it, how to treat it, it was a lot to handle and a lot of chapters in the book. So that overwhelmed us. But with uh, persistence i kind of got through it but you ask me anything right now like specific questions i'm pretty sure i wouldn't be able to answer that um so then after that lecture we did um uh neurology how to assess the neurovascular oh my god oh yeah neurovascular uh the nervous system how to assess for that um we went into eye and ear disorders, which was kind of random, but what else? We did glaucoma, cataracts, uh, you know, knowing intraocular intra pressure, vision loss, eye infections, get that pink eye, it's nasty. Okay, and then for the ear, we did Meniere's disease which includes vertigo, which sucks. If you've ever had vertigo, you know it sucks. Whew, hearing loss, ear infections. Then we moved on to muscul musculoskeletal. For that, we also did assessment. We learned about the assessment of the musculoskeletal system. We learned about, very briefly, not anything in too, too crazy detail, um, strains and sprains, fractures, surgical and non-surgical management of these conditions. And finally, the big whammy, or the last fourth of the semester, was all psychology, which I was so excited about because I have a BA in psych. We learned, and this is going to be a long list, so excuse me, um, mental health assessment, schizophrenia, mood disorders such as depression, mania, bipolar disorder, suicide, cognitive disorders, which include delirium and dementia. Uh, somatoform disorders, hypochondriasis, so your hypochondriacs that are like, oh, I'm gonna get sick, and germaphobes, you're germaphobes basically. Body dysmorphic disorder, 
anxiety disorders, which are like your phobias, your PS, PTSD, your post-traumatic stress disorder, substance abuse, personality disorders, so that includes your antisocials, your OCDs, your paranoids, your passive-aggressive people, eating disorders, uh, child and adolescent disorders, which include uh, included ADHD and autism, among others, abuse and violence. Oh my god, so that was what was taught within my first year of nursing school, which was a lot. So I look at it and I get a little sick, but uh, what am I going to do? And basically, because now I'm looking at the time and I've been rambling for 20 minutes, which is really sad. Um, the other stuff that I'm going to go over before I start school will be math stuff and clinical skills. And being that I went on longer than I wanted to, um, when I do the separate videos for math and for clinical skills, I'll go over what was taught from nursing one and two, do like a brief background, and then get into it because I'm pretty sure half of you are asleep already watching this. Um, I'm going to try my best. I swear I'm going to try my best to make a video every week, if not every two weeks, because... I take these hiatuses and then I don't know what I'm doing or what's been going on in the world. But um, if you're watching this and you lasted 21 minutes and 30 seconds, thank you so much. Um, I mean, if you couldn't watch it, I have the description down below of what the video is about. So again, thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. And until next time, see you later. Bye.